All right, so the state of JavaScript survey results for 2020 just dropped. I haven't looked at the results at all or not. So I'm gonna give you a true authentic first look reaction video. I'll tell you what I think makes sense, what seems a little off and uh, what you should be excited about for this year in 2021 for JavaScript. All right, so before we actually dive into the survey results, if you're new to the channel, my name is James Hugh Quick and I do weekly videos on web development related topics. I do a ton with JavaScript, so I am particularly interested to see what the results show here. I've done a couple of comparison videos in the past with different frameworks. One example is the React versus Angular one up here. So I'm really curious to see if like the survey results from this year match up with kind of some of the info that I showed from last year. So again, looking at this for the first time, let's go ahead and dive into the results. And uh, references 2020 being crappy in some ways, uh, talking about the improvements in the la in JavaScript language and optional chaining, nullist coalescing, TypeScript growth. Uh, on the framework side, just when we think things were settling down, Svelte came out of nowhere. I'm using Svelte in an internal project on uh, at Auth0 at work, uh, which is interesting. It's like the first time that I'm getting to try this and I like it so far, it's pretty cool. Uh, and then not to mention, like there's lots of other frameworks like Blitz.js, Redwood.js on the React side. There's uh, even more kind of coming out too. Snowpack, I think I saw that referenced uh, somewhere in here, or maybe I just made that up. Uh, Snowpack was uh, something that I wanted to learn. There it is. Svelte and Snowpack are great. Uh, so are React and Webpack. Yeah, I think Snowpack is like a new bundler. I've never used it, so I don't know much about it. Uh, they'll do a special live stream launch. That's actually cool. Um, with Kinsey Dodge, Josh Komu, I don't know if that's right. Sarah Drasner, that kind of, those kind of cool people. And there's also the state of CSS survey. They got some credits. All right, so let's go ahead and let's dive in. Uh, one, you can get a t-shirt. So check out the t-shirt if you want to uh, look pretty sweet with a, like a, <laughs> a periodic table of JavaScript on you. And then uh, demographics here, uh, as you would imagine, uh, this would be pretty US centric uh, or not necessarily centric, but more people in the US. So 21% there. Um, and then Canada is at 3.5%. Um, and then Europe is kind of in the blue area. And then Russia. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought about Russia. That's kind of cool. Um, languages that people filled out the survey, predominantly English, uh, Spanish, French. Yeah, really just predominantly English. That's interesting. Salaries. This is a cool one. And I might do a follow-up video on this completely. So salaries, like people always ask, what kind of salary can I expect? Well, that like varies greatly on not necessarily, not just what country you're in, but if you're in the US, like what state and what city specifically, and I'm sure it's the same in other countries. So you see a wide, uh, wide array, uh, JavaScript array, pun intended, of, uh, of salaries here, uh, ranging from everything from less than 10,000 to uh, greater than 200,000. Uh, years of experience, you can kind of, this is usually uh, pretty consistent. Two to 10 years is pretty dominant. Actually cool that there's a significant amount of people that have been doing it for 10 to 20 years. That is cool. Um, and I don't think that would have been the case last year. Different companies that people work at. Uh, how did people find out about the survey? All right, let's go. The job titles is interesting. Full stack developer being number one, uh, front end developer, web developer, CTO, back end designer, or back end developer, web designer. Uh, those are interesting. All right, so let's, let's, uh, how do I move past the demographic? Cool. Let's go to features. So this would be features in JavaScript. Uh, there's lots of things in here. Let's just kind of take a look. The knowledge score, this is out of all the features mentioned in the survey, how many did the respondent know about? And by the way, I don't, I can't, I don't think I filled out the survey this year, uh, but a lot of people knew 60 to hundred percent of the features. So that's good. Like you want to have people be aware of the features that JavaScript has. All right. And then we're breaking down, uh, some of the syntax in JavaScript. Uh, and this is kind of cool. These are destructuring and spread operator ES6 features that are really handy. I use all the time. If you'd like to see videos on those two as individual topics, let me know. Uh, a lot of people are aware of arrow functions. Uh, Nullish coalescing and optional chaining, those are two new ones. Private fields is a new one I didn't even know about in classes. So these are new features of uh, JavaScript, which is uh, pretty cool that they're listed in here and have some awareness to them. You can see that they are, there's no previous year results to compare to. So that's cool. Uh, cool little syntax stuff in there. Now let's get into uh, language, uh, some of the vocabulary of JavaScript. I don't know what a proxy is, to be honest. I've never heard of that. Async await is something I use all the time. I've got a video on asynchronous JavaScript if you want to learn more, uh, including promises. I don't know anything about decorators. 
Promise.all settled, um, I think is similar to promise.all, but I don't know exactly what the difference is. Uh, describes the outcome of each promise. I think, I think promise.all will resolve if one is bad, all of them will be bad. Maybe I'm not exactly sure what the difference is uh, between all settled. So something I can look at as well. Uh, dynamic import. This is a new uh, new feature as well. Uh, so it's cool to see some good awareness on these, even if people haven't used it. So that's nice. Data structures. I don't know if if you know this, but like maps and sets are um, are legit um, data types or data structures inside of JavaScript now. Uh, typed arrays. I didn't know this. Um, that's kind of cool. And then the array flat, being able to flatten out an array. This has been something that uh, Lodash and things like that have taken care of for a long time. Big int. And then uh, ES6 for everyone. You got West Boss's course in there. How could you not have his course in there? Now, the browser APIs are pretty cool. I've never used a service worker myself. Uh, people use service workers a lot, especially for offline applications. Local storage, being able to store bits of information, maybe a cookie or something. Um, or like a session thing in local storage, you could do that. You wouldn't store a cookie in local storage because it's in its own cookie, but session stuff you could store in there. Internationalization, internationalization, uh, web audio, web GL, web animations. I've never used any of these. I do know WebRTC has been a really interesting one uh, to be able to stream audio and video and build like a, a video chat thing. Uh, the Web Dev Simplified channel has done one of those. So you can go and check check out his videos for that. Uh, yeah, a lot of lot of different cool stuff in here uh, that you can do with the browser APIs. Um, those are a, a lot of fun, to be honest. Um, all right, I'm going to skip down to uh, technologies and let's look at the JavaScript flavors. Uh, so no real surprise here that TypeScript is leading in satisfaction, leading in interest, leading in usage of these and by far in terms of usage. So here's a safe bet. TypeScript is going to continue to grow. You'll see more and more people having support for TypeScript and their frameworks. You'll see more and more people using and loving TypeScript. And that's really going to be the example uh, through the entirety of this. So almost everyone's heard of TypeScript. All of these other ones, a lot of people have not. Uh, the positive negative split, super positive on TypeScript, uh, not as positive on the other ones. And then some of the other uh, ones that are listed in here, Svet, Svet, Svelte, View, React, uh, Angular and jQuery being frameworks, not really what you would typically consider um, a flavor of JavaScript. They're more a library or framework, which is why those probably, these are free form answers. So that's why they're not super popular because that's not typically what people think of when they think of flavors of JavaScript. So TypeScript, TypeScript is a super safe bet going forward. Um, just keep an eye on TypeScript, try it out, use it, look at some tutorials, I would say. Svelte and the front end frameworks being the really uh, exciting newcomer to uh, to the field. A or React has a pretty high margin in terms of usage. No surprise there. Angular being a close second. I think sometimes we forget how popular Angular is, especially in the enterprise scenario. So Angular and then uh, further down is Vue, actually not that far behind, uh, but still further down than Vue or then Vue is further down than Angular. Uh, and then you get into Svelte and so on and so on. So like if I if I were if you were to ask me which one to learn, learn React. It's the most popular, most tutorials, blah blah blah. Uh, if you're look applying for a job that specifically uses Angular or Vue, learn that one. Obviously, they're all great. They just do things a little bit differently, but for the most part, they accomplish the same type of thing. Um, Vue is one of those ones you can see satisfaction. Vue is going to be uh, really high here at 85%. Uh, people are going to be really interested in Vue as well. Uh, it just doesn't have the actual usage numbers that React does so far. You can see these are um, kind of similar to each other in terms of where they are now. Um, like pretty good uh, positivity, pretty good awareness. Angular is a little bit mixed in like not interested or would not use again. Um, I think it has, Angular just has kind of its connotation and it's people that really love it. And there's nothing wrong with that. So um, some of the other ones in here, Nuxt, uh, Next.js, Meteor. Redwood, that's cool that it made it on Gatsby. Uh, so other frameworks and stuff that that you can use uh, pretty cool or look into for fun. D <clears throat> Data layer is an interesting uh, one. Redux has gone way down from where it was. GraphQL being like, say the newcomer, GraphQL has been around for several years and still just continuing to grow. People are loving it. And you'll see uh, more usage of GraphQL, more uh, things that are built on top of GraphQL, like the graph or the Apollo client. Uh, so these are um, pretty interesting for data. I also like the call out here for insomnia. This being 
A competitor to Postman, I've never used Insomnia, but I've heard people really like it to be able to send HTTP requests. And uh, if Sarah Drasner likes it, then uh, then I'm all in. So uh, people are really positive on GraphQL and Apollo clients. Uh, not really surprised there. Uh, people are loving it. People are using it more and more. Really cool shout out to React Query and SWR, like a query cache uh, package uh, for React. And uh, these are, I'm hearing a lot more about these. I've started to use them. I was a little um, unsure why you would use them for a while, to be honest. And now it's starting to resonate a little bit more. So cool that those uh, those made it on here. Back in frameworks. I think this one will be interesting because you see stuff like uh, Next.js, Nuxt, um, and Gatsby. And those are more built to create front-end front-end websites, but they have a back-end component to them, which is why they get thrown into the back-end framework. So it's not your traditional back-end framework, although Next and Nux do have more traditional back-end stuff. Typically, what you think of is Express. And if you've ever learned a full-stack JavaScript thing or done a, a tutorial, um, that's not going to surprise you that Express is super popular. Uh, so Express on here basically being the number one in usage is what I would expect. And then Next.js as a back-end. Um, I am using Nest.js for the first time. It's kind of like a very opinionated backend on Node that's similar to how Angular is for the front end. So using that on a project at work, and it's actually uh, it's actually pretty interesting. So I'm I'm pretty uh, pretty well. I wouldn't say I'm comfortable. I'm enjoying working with it so far. Uh, Remix as one that people are thinking of a different approach to React frameworks. I don't know much about Remix. Uh, people. The people who are excited about it and know about it are really excited about it, but I don't know a whole lot. Um, so Next.js really gaining some traction. Uh, Gatsby really gaining some traction. Uh, a little bit uh, kind of not interested. That's interesting uh, for people to not be as interested. Meteor just kind of on, on the downswing, unfortunately. I know a lot of people, including Scott Zelensky, uh, really love it. So it's kind of kind of sad to see that going down. It is also cool, though, to see Blitz.js referenced in here an up and coming uh, framework. Node as a free form answer. That's just kind of the, the general one. Yeah, oh, Dino on here too. <laughs> There's a lot of hype about Dino for a while. Uh, testing is not something I know a whole lot about. You'll probably see the common things on here, Jasmine and Jest and uh, Cypress is another one. Storybook, this is an interesting one. I know nothing about Storybook um, for the most part, really. Um, but I hear people, uh, really like it, it seems like. So um, this is satisfaction and then interest and usage. Justin, Mocha, Jasmine, Storybook, Cypress, Puppeteer, React Testing Library, all ones that, yeah, those are, like, I hear about them. I don't know a whole lot about testing, so not surprised to see them there. Um, see a lot of, like, incline in some of these newer ones. Jasmine's been around for a while, so it's staying kind of flat. Mocha's been around for a while, so it's staying kind of flat. Jess seems like it's really becoming... Uh, one of the default maybe for people in terms of interest and in, uh, in usage. So that's kind of cool. See other tools. I don't really, I've heard of Chai. I don't really, Karma is a, a test runner. Enzyme is for UI test. Don't quote me on that. I'm not exactly sure what that's for. Uh, so a couple of other, other names on there. Uh, build tool should be interesting. So Webpack uh, being uh, really probably the default for a lot of stuff parcel and roll up we use roll up with svelte i'm not exactly sure why i think maybe that's just the way svelte goes but uh, we're using that with this internal project so that's the satisfaction people uh typically are well i was gonna say love all of these that's not true at all uh gulp and browser fire way down roll up at 85 percent parcel is a cool one i've done a video on parcel webpack typescript i'm not sure typescript is a build tool per se, but anyway, um, interest in snowpack that being kind of the new, uh, the new one that I know almost nothing about, but people are excited about it. Usage webpack being number one gulp being number two is interesting. People don't really go out of their way to use gulp anymore, but it was so popular for a while, uh, that I think it's still kind of holding on. Um, let's see webpack. Uh, yeah, really kind of dominating this graph. Uh, very few people have not heard of it. Um, maybe a little bit more haven't heard of it than Gulp. It's funny that Gulp, more people haven't heard of it the farther we go in time versus almost no one has heard of, almost no one has not heard of Webpack uh, in 2020. So that's kind of interesting. 
uh, survey pretty much adds up. Like the the general trend is if if people enjoy it, if people are happy with it, it's going to continue to grow, and that should be no surprise at all. Uh, React Native Electron is what I would expect to see on here. Ionic is one um, I don't know a whole lot about. Interesting that its satisfaction is kind of lower. Um, I'm not sure what native. Oh, just building native apps with like Java, Android, Kotlin, Android, that sort of stuff. Electron and React Native. I'm interested in the usage. Cordova, uh, still uh, one of the more popular ones. Electron and Ionic kind of following up for there. And React Native leading. I've really wanted to spend some time with React Native and just haven't uh, haven't been able to. Electron really makes its name with VS Code and Slack and Discord. All those apps being built with VS or with Electron really make it uh, pretty powerful. And then React Native. Not surprised that those two are um, are really the leaders there. Svelte Native that I have not heard of. I can't imagine that's very popular. I assume things aren't popular if I haven't heard of them. So anyway, that's probably not fair. But um, other things that people use Axios as a HTTP request, Lodash as kind of utils function. Moment.js, date functions, which I think is a lighter version of Moment.js. jQuery still being popular. Underscore being similar to Lodash. I forget which came first and what the difference is. I don't really know. Uh, but there's lots of different libraries in here. You can look through and, and kind of see. Uh, utilities, NPM uh, being the most popular. Yarn, popular too. Prettier ESLint for formatting and um, rules in ESLint sense. That makes sense. Other utilities, uh, runtimes, Node and Dino, browser, makes sense. Text editors, VS Code, there shouldn't even be a question for that. VS Code all the way. Check out the VS Code playlist if you want to. Other text editors, yeah, that's fine. Just it's not VS Code, <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, lots, of different, lots of different tools in here. Interesting to look at the popular other languages, Python, PHP, Java, C Sharp. Um, and then .NET is like C Sharp falls in that category. Um, that's not really a surprise. That's pretty like pretty much what you'd expect, to be honest. Uh, so that's it. I think that uh, I think that kind of wraps up the reaction video. Uh, lots of good stuff. Stuff that I'm excited about. Next.js is a huge one for me. TypeScript, I'm getting more excited about. I'm interested in these new React frameworks, Redwood and Blitz. I uh, want to learn more on the view side uh, with Next.js and Gridsum and that sort of stuff. Uh, interesting tools coming out. Um, GraphQL getting a lot of popularity. Um, and you see things like uh, Angular being a little bit dissatisfied with. You see things like Redux kind of going down its, its usage. Um, I don't know. So uh, lots of good insights. Let me know what you think of the 2020 JavaScript survey results in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you what your thoughts are, what you're excited about, specifically what you're most excited about. Actually, two things. What are you most excited about in 2021? And what are you uh, excited to leave behind? What are you not going to use anymore in 2021? Anyway, uh, happy 2020. <laughs> happy 21. No, I can't say that. How do I? Happy 2021 to you. Hope you're enjoying it so far. Thanks for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, like, subscribe to the channel, check me out on future videos. In the meantime, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.